up guys? Today we're going to talk about the top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz. We really want to thank all of our Patreon supporters for donating as little as a dollar a month to keep this channel going. There are several perks for being a Patreon, so check out the link below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our channel's videos. Also, feel free to drop us a comment and let us know about a future video topic you'd like us to cover. I'm really excited today to talk about the top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz. Now, most of the general public probably only knows about the baritone saxophone through Lisa Simpson. The baritone, of course, is in the large family of the saxophones. Above it, we have the tenor, alto, soprano, and sopranino. And there are, in fact, saxophones below the baritone, the bass and the contrabass. <laughs> Before the advent of the microphone, the string bass was not practical for recording, so jazz bands often had a bass saxophone. But we'll talk about that in another video. The baritone has had an instrumental role defining the sound of the big band. In a standard sax section, we have two altos, two tenors, and one baritone. <laughs> The lowest note on the traditional baritone saxophone is B flat, which is a concert D flat on the piano. So many of the big bands played in this key so that the saxophones would resonate together in a powerful way. Over the years, the baritone saxophone has been played in so many different styles within the jazz idiom, from swing music to bebop to post-bop and cool jazz. And as always, this list is not subjective at all. So if anyone disagrees with me, they're wrong. Okay, let's get to the list. Coming in at number 10 for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Ronnie Cuber. In addition to the baritone sax, Cuber has played tenor and soprano sax, clarinet, and flute, and is primarily known for his hard bop and Latin jazz playing. He has also performed extensively in the pop, rock, and blues genres with B.B. King, Paul Simon, and Eric Clapton. In the 1960s, Cuber often performed with Slide Hampton, Maynard Ferguson, and George Benson. He was a member of the Mingus Big Band starting in the early 1990s. Coming in at number 9, for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Gary Smolian. Smolian got his start working with Woody Herman and has since performed extensively with the Mel Lewis Orchestra, the Dizzy Gillespie All-Star Big Band, and the Mingus Big Band. His playing is marked by an aggressive rhythmic sense, an intelligent and creative harmonic approach, and incisive wit. He's performed with the jazz legends, including Dizzy Gillespie, Stan Getz, Chick Corea, Tito Puente, Ray Charles, Diana Ross, and has over 10 recordings out under his own name. Smolian is a four-time winner of the Downbeat Critics Poll Baritone Saxophonist of the Year and a six-time Grammy Award winner for his work with B.B. King, Joe Lovano, Dave Holland, and the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra. Coming in at number eight for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Scott Robinson. Robinson is best known for his work on various saxophones, but also performs on clarinet, flute, trumpet, sarusophone, the theremin, and dozens of other obscure instruments. He can be heard on more than 300 recordings, including four Grammy winners and 20 under his own leadership. He's been the baritone saxophonist with the Maria Schneider Big Band for more than 25 years. 
Not only does Robinson play the most diverse group of instruments than any other performer, the styles of music he plays are equally eclectic, from rock and roll, pop, and avant-garde. He plays a vintage contrabass saxophone, which is one octave below the standard baritone. Fewer than 20 of these vintage instruments in playable condition are known to exist. <laughs> Coming in at number 7 for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Serge Chaloff. Chaloff was the first true bebop baritone saxophonist. Early on, he idolized Ellington's baritonist, Harry Carney. As a young pro, Chaloff was featured in the big bands of Jimmy Dorsey and Woody Herman. He gained recognition on the recording of Four Brothers, along with Stan Getz and Zoot Sims. Next, he worked for a while with Count Basie and then Bud Powell. Chaloff got caught up in a heroin addiction, but eventually kicked the habit, moved to LA, where he made his finest recording entitled Blue Surge. Sadly, Chaloff died from spinal cancer at the age of 33. Coming in at number 6 for top baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Hamiette Blewett. As a child, Blewett studied piano, trumpet, and clarinet, but settled on baritone saxophone from the age of 10. He heard Harry Carney, which made a strong impression, providing an example of a baritone saxophonist who played as a soloist rather than an accompanist. In New York City, Blewett joined the Charles Mingus Quintet and the Sam Rivers Large Ensemble, and later he co-founded the World Saxophone Quartet. Since the 1990s, Blewett led a quartet made up of entirely baritone saxophonists with drum set accompaniment. Outside of jazz, Blewett worked with Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 in top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Cecil Payne. Payne was inspired to start playing jazz after hearing Lester Young. He began his professional recording career with J.J. Johnson, Roy Eldridge, and Dizzy Gillespie. In the early 50s, he worked with Tad Dameron, Illinois Jaquette, and Randy Weston. Cecil Payne was a cousin of trumpeter Marcus Belgrave, who he recorded with briefly. Coming in at number 4 in top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Joe Temperley. Temperley developed a strong, unique voice on the baritone saxophone, soprano saxophone, and bass clarinet. He performed with Humphrey Littleton's London-based band for 8 years before he moved to the US. There he toured with Woody Herman for 2 years. In the late 60s and early 70s, Temperley performed with Buddy Rich, Joe Henderson, Duke Pearson, the Thad Jones Mel Lewis Orchestra, and Clark Terry. In 1974, Temperley replaced Harry Carney in the Ellington Orchestra under the direction of Duke's son, Mercer Ellington. He was an original member of the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra under the direction of Wynton Marsalis and served on the faculty of the Juilliard School for Jazz Studies. Temperley was my private teacher and mentor for many years at school, and in fact he sold me one of his baritones, which is this one. I have so many fond memories of spending time with Joe, and he gave me so much knowledge and appreciation of this music. I'm forever grateful for spending so much time with Joe and him to share his experience, technique, and love of this music with me. Coming in at number 3 for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Jerry Mulligan. Mulligan is one of the world's most iconic jazz baritone saxophonists, playing the instrument with a light and airy tone, helping to find the era of cool jazz. Mulligan was also a significant arranger, working with Claude Thornhill, Miles Davis, and Stan Kenton. His pianoless quartet of the early 1950s with trumpeter Chet Baker is still regarded as one of the best cool jazz groups. Mulligan was also a reed doubler and skilled pianist. 
Several of his compositions, such as Walkin' Shoes and Five Brothers, have become standards. <laughs> Coming in at number two for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Pepper Adams. Adams was influenced at a young age by listening to the big bands of Fletcher Henderson, Jimmy Lunsford, Duke Ellington, and Cab Calloway. He gravitated to the musical styles of Coleman Hawkins and Don Bias, but ultimately cited his greatest influences as Harry Carney and Wardell Gray. Adams began performing with Donald Byrd, Stan Kenton, Chet Baker, Benny Goodman, Charles Mingus, and Thelonious Monk. He was a founding member of the legendary Thad Jones Mel Lewis Big Band, which performed weekly at the Village Vanguard and all around the world. Adams managed to bring the cumbersome baritone into the blistering fast speeds of hard bop with a more raw aggressive style compared to cool jazz. <laughs> Coming in at number one for top 10 baritone saxophonists in jazz, we have Harry Carney. Carney first played professionally in Boston clubs, influenced by the clarinetists Buster Bailey, Sidney Bechet, Don Murray, and his close friend, saxophonist Johnny Hodges. Along with Duke Ellington, Harry Carney introduced the baritone saxophone to the general public as a solo vehicle. Carney described his own baritone playing as trying to make the upper register sound like Coleman Hawkins and the lower register like Adrian Rolini. Ellington often used the upper register of Carney's baritone to feature him unconventionally. was Ellington's longest serving orchestra member, sticking to Ellington's side faithfully for over 40 years. I first heard Harry Carney on recordings of Ellington's band when I was only in elementary school. I mentioned before that this baritone I'm playing was given to me by Joe Temperley. Before that, it was owned by Manny Album, another great baritone saxophonist. And before that, it was owned and played by Harry Carney. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would even touch the same baritone that was played by Harry Carney. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is there anyone who I left off? The baritone saxophone is such a great instrument and there's quite a wide variety of stylistic voices on the instrument. As always, we really want to thank our Patreon supporters who donate as little as a dollar a month to keep the channel going. Please let us know about a topic for a future video that you'd like to see us do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We'll see you next time.